Hello everyone, this is Heather Moorfield Lang and thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel Tech15. Today I'm going to be introducing you or reintroducing you to a wonderful website called Code.org. Now, you may be familiar with Code.org because of their ever awesome Hour of Code that takes place in December. If you are not, know that every December Code.org has what they call an Hour of Code, which is where millions of students around the world, as well as their librarians and teachers, take part in an Hour of Code, where students and teachers and librarians do coding as part of their program. And it's an hour of code throughout the week, but then typically what happens is the students take part in more than an hour of code. It can be a week of code. It can lead to more than that. And if you aren't able to take part in December because of testing or holidays or whatever the case may be, you can always take part in the hour of code later. Hour of code is always available on code.org. But that is what Code.org is all about. Code.org is all about computer science, students in computer science, learning about the backgrounds with websites, coding, and what creates everything that we have online. So I'm going to just give you a brief introduction to Code.org, just so you can see what it's all about, what's there, and how awesome that it is. So if you're here on the Code.org site, website is up top, Code.org, when you get there you will notice everything that is here on the site. And the place that you can go to get to a lot of the material on this website is up top. If you click on Learn up here in the middle, you will see that they have Hour of Code. And when you go to Hour of Code, this is where you can actually take part in the activities that they have had this year. Things will change on the Hour of Code site for this coming year because they're going to have more happening for the 2015 Hour of Code. But this year, Hour of Code activities included coding with Anna and Elsa from Frozen, as well as Angry Birds bird coding. These were tutorials for beginners. Then they also had tutorials that taught JavaScript, um, no internet or device. They actually had analog or unplugged computer coding because I'll be really honest, code.org was so popular during the week of Hour of Code that it actually got overloaded. But there are many other websites to help with coding, things like CodeMonkey, and there are many others. If you ever want to talk to me about it, just get in touch with me. I can give you many more. There's also tutorial apps for your phones and your tablets and other programming languages, depending on what you're interested in. They also give you beyond one hour of code, as well as finding local schools and camps that are also taking part. So if you'd be interested in working on Google Hangouts or Skype and Skyping in and pair coding or hooking your students up with other schools and having them partner up with their coding, you can do all sorts of stuff. For those of you who are going coding, I don't know anything about computer science. I don't know anything about this type of area. I don't know how to code. Well, they have professional development for you in the elementary levels, the middle and high school levels, and you can join some of their workshops. You can take their coding courses here free online. There's a myriad of studios. They actually have their own line code studio that's meant to be used in all settings. They have all different types of online workshops, partnerships in school districts, all different types of areas to go to learn how to code yourself so that you feel more, com more comfortable in what you're doing, as well as courses for elementary school, algebra, science, computer science, computer science principles. They have all sorts of curricula specifically for us in our fields, in our schools, and we as librarians can partner with our teachers, our educators, our administrators. They also have statistics um, where computer science is being promoted across the United States. And then also areas about about and where you can help them as a group with code.org. And then also, if you would like, you can find back on the main webpage, you can find information again about Hour of Code, areas that you can explore with your students for different tutorials, again, where you as educators can find information. And then you can also see great studio creations that have been created by students on code.org. So if you're looking for a great place to start with coding, if you've created a makerspace and you're interested in doing a coding day, if you're interested in doing anything with code.org, if you're looking for just areas, this is a great way to start, especially with elementary school. Works well for middle and high. If you're interested in more for the upper grade levels, if you're going, well, Angry Birds and Anna and Elsa are a little bit young for my folks, that's okay. There are many other 
categories, many other websites that are great for coding for older students as well. Just know you got code.org to get you started in this area, a great user-friendly intuitive site that can help you out with coding. Join code.org for the hour of code. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll have more great tools for you to explore in the coming weeks. Thanks and have a great day.